to the saints in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. We want to welcome you in this Sabbath service. We shall bow our heads as we pray before we get rid of the word. Loving Heavenly Father, we come before your throne. We surrender ourselves as the work of your hands. May you lead us with your spirit and reveal yourself to us through thy word that at the end of it all we may know thee and know thy will, and give us hearts that are willing to repent and to do that which you command us to do. May you lead us in this service for the benefit of our salvation. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. I want to invite you to read with me the book of Hebrews chapter 10. We are reading verse 26, and it reads as follows. For if we sin willfully, 
after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. This is the word of God, and may God bless the reading of his word. The Apostle Paul in this book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews um, is a narration of what God has demonstrated to us for over 4,000 4, years. God has been telling us his plan in saving us and his uh, plan to send his son for our salvation. And therefore, in Hebrews, Paul summarizes what God has done for our lives. But it also points us to where Christ is and the work he does on our behalf before the Father, where he appears to plead for us that we might find mercy. That's why Paul says, let us come boldly before the throne of grace that we may receive mercy in times of refreshing. Therefore, the book of Hebrews becomes God's giving act demonstrated and narrated in this book and what Christ is practically doing for our behalf. In the Old Testament times, when someone has sinned, the Bible has given ample provision for salvation. In that it says, when a nation had sinned, it was to bring a bull for its pardon. But also when an individual had sinned, that individual was to bring a lamb. Uh, if he can't afford a lamb, he was to run and catch a bed. Uh, if this individual cannot catch a bed, cannot afford a lamb, and therefore the Bible says you were to bring a flower as a token of your apology to God to say that I acknowledge my sin. But a failure to do so was the breaking of the commandment of God. And the Bible says, when we have broken this commandment without remorse, when a man has sinned against, and it calls it the law of Moses, which necessarily is the law of God. But it was a law which was referred to as a covenant. Why a covenant? When Moses came down from the mountain, having broken the Ten Commandments, the Bible says God called him up again. The people, when God had called them to assemble, they said to Moses, go and be our representative. Whatever God will speak with you, that we shall do. So in essence, the people committed themselves to this law. And God the second time did not write, but commanded Moses to write. So the law was an agreement between God and men that this is the standard of life. This is how we should live. And man was an agreement. And having committed to do this, to break that covenant, to act against it, because this was a law that was for the benefit of humanity. It was to uplift the nation. So it was to the people's best interest. Hence the Bible says, when we sin, we are acting against our best interest, even when we do so uh, ignorantly. But now the Bible says, when we have known the truth, because the sin is rebellion. Sin is the breaking of the commandments of God. Now it says here, when we have known the truth, when you don't know, Christ says you cannot be judged because you are judged based on what you know. And the more you know, the more responsible you ought to be. Now the Bible says here, if you have known the truth and after you have known the truth, to him who know what is right to do and does not do it, to him it is sin. When you know and you are convinced of what God desires in your life, the Bible says you ought to do that. When you failed in the Old Testament and having failed to come to God and apologize for your sins, then the Bible says you were to be stoned to death. But now the Bible says God has emphasized this covenant by giving us his son. That's why John says, uh, behold what manner of love that the Father has given to us in that he gave his only begotten son for the remission of our sins. And the Bible will say, if we have sinned, we have a way of coming back to God because we have an advocate. Now it says here, when you have known the truth, having accepted the truth, having been enlightened, and after that, having been cleansed by the blood of the lamb, and you still go back to your sins. Peter says, it is like a dog that is going back to its vomit. That's how sin is detestable in the eyes of God. It is something he cannot look at because he can't understand why he would do it. It is like a pig that would have been cleansed and then go back to the mud. Sin is not, we are not victims to the enemy. 
We are not caught in the snare of the devil. When we sin, we are actively rebelling against God. And the book of Hebrews says that the sin, uh, when we are sinning, we are hostile to God. So in essence that we are deliberately breaking God's commandment, knowingly so. And the Bible says the worst part about sin is that when we have committed it, that the one who was tempted, because the sin is committed after one is tempted, and then give into that sin. When you have fallen, just like if you become now the tempter, the agent of the enemy that has conquered you. Hence, Ellen White says, what we do not conquer now, one day will conquer us. So the Bible says to us in this text that when we have experienced the love of God, when we have felt the working of its power, when God has worked in our lives to take away the old things that God cannot stand. And then after we have been cleansed, God having made provision for our salvation, and we go back and do willfully so what God has saved us from. The Bible says we are not only acting against our welfare, but we are actively rebelling. We are actually saying, like men who stood in Pilate's judgment, or to say, away with this man. We are literally saying to God, we can do it on our own. We do not need you. We do not need your law. We do not need your guidance. We do not think that you can say anything to us that can work. And in that situation, the Bible says, we are, when we are at that point, we are of our father, the devil, who rebelled in heaven, having promised liberty at the breaking of God's law. But when he left that throne, the angels that followed him soon realized that the future we were promised, the elevation that sin had promised, because sin promises us to put us on an elevated point. For a moment, Eve thought that he had reached a higher stage of existence. But he, she soon realized that what the devil has promised, it was empty promises. There is life in the promises of God. Because when God promises, he fulfills his promise. And he calls upon us to say that if we break his commandment, after he had done it all to save us, God has no other means to devise other than saving us through the death of his son, whom he raised from the dead. And the only angel that agent that heaven uses in our time, it is the Holy Spirit that God sends to us to prick us at the moment of decision making. The Holy Spirit will whisper a voice of assurance to say, this is the way. Walk ye in it, my child. But when we resist that voice and grieve the Spirit of God, the Bible says there is nothing else that God can do. The only thing that remains, it is that we wait for the final destruction when God will destroy his enemies. But in the intervening time, we still have a moment of coming back to God because there is no sinner pertinent who comes to God and is rejected. Even in the Old Testament, what made Achan to be stoned, it is because that the voice of reason that wrestled with him, searching from the nation, from the families, from the tribes, until it reached the families, until it reached the individuals. Finally, when he is found out, he comes and confess the facts, not his sin. Sin, when it must be forsaken, we should see its sinfulness. We must look upon it. I fully understand that. The Christian life is a battle and a match. Paul says himself, when I want to do good, which is what I love, I find myself doing evil, which I do not want to do. And then he says, surely there must be a power that is within me, that is wrestling with me, and it is above me. And he says, I cried to God to say, who can free me from this problem I am having? And he says, thanks be to Jesus, because that is the medium that God has given upon us. Hence, Paul says, salvation is found in no one else. There is only one mediator between God and man. It is Christ himself. Never can we understand the cost of our salvation until the redeemed shall stand with Christ before the sea of glass. But then when we are struggling with sin, the Bible says, put on the whole armor of God 
that you can stand against the wills of the enemy. The devil, James says to us, resist the devil and he will free from he will flee from you unless there is an effort on our part there is nothing we can do that can save us salvation is god's gift in our lives but our response to that salvation it is to accept the life of christ and to live the very same life when we resist the devil when we do not acknowledge his beating the bible says then at that point we are allowed to live a perfect life and God's calling and standard has never changed. It has been what it has been from time immemorial. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Be ye imitators of God. Live as Christ has lived. Walk as he has walked. As ye have received Christ Jesus the Lord, walk ye in him. Friends, I want to appeal to all of us. Higher than the human mind can reach is God's ideal for his children. Godliness and God-likeness is the standard to be reached. God is able to transform us, to pull us from the mud and the pit of sin, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and put his spirit within our lives, that we may walk in the newness of life. When we move from that and go back to our sinful ways, the Bible says all heaven, becomes disappointed and angels would look down and put down their hearts because a child of God has fallen. God is touched with our infirmities, but he is willing. He is reaching out to us. Are you weary? Are you heavy laden? Are you struggling with sin? The Bible says Jesus is passing by. He is forever willing to forgive us. He says, give me thy heart, my son. When you come to me, and confess your sins. I am willing to forgive you. The mercy is still open. We can find him and he can help us to live the way Christ has designed us to live. Because in this life, we are preparing for heaven. The life we live now is the life that must we must be permitted to live in glory in eternity. Friends, may we find him before it is forever too late. Shall we bow our heads as we pray? Loving Heavenly Father, we come before your throne. We are sinners. Even when we try to do good, we find ourselves doing bad. But Lord, we want to come before thy throne and say we are sorry. Forgive us our sins and accept us anew as your children. Set your salvation that at the end of it all, when you shall come, we may be counted amongst those worthy to welcome you at your coming. Be our God and lead us always. We send ourselves to the care of your love. For it is in Jesus' name that we have prayed. To him who is able to keep us from falling, and to present us before the Father faultless glory and honor must be upon his name. And may the grace of God, the love of the Son, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost may the rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Precious memory.